In this video, I will demonstrate how to factor a perfect square trinomial, which is not to be confused with a perfect square binomial. The question that we are going to factor, the expression is written right here. The first thing you want to do is you want to arrange it in this format, which is referred to as standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. Notice how the first term is the x squared term, the second term is the x term, and the last term is the constant. In our case, it is represented in this way. In order to factor this using this new method, you have to test if it is, in fact, a perfect square trinomial. And there are a few things that you can look out for to determine whether it works. First, is the a term a perfect square? Let's do a test. Let's square root the a term. And it is. It is a perfect square. Similarly, let's find out if the c term is a perfect square. And it is a perfect square. So, so far we're two for two. The next thing is if you multiply a and c, you should get a number whose square root is half the b term. What I mean by that is the following. So let's identify once again the a and the c term. The a term is this one, and the c term is this one. Now we're going to look at their coefficients. The coefficient of that first term is 1, so we multiply 1 with 4. 1 times 4 is equal to 4. Now, we have to square root this number and see if it is half of the central terms. 4 square rooted is equal to 2. 2 is half of 4. So, this qualifies as a perfect square trinomial. So, what do we do with all this information that we just found? Well, here's what you do. You look at the b term. And you'll notice that the b term has a symbol that's minus. Keep that in mind. What we do is we take our two terms, a and 2, and we use this minus and we put a squared. And I can assure you that if you expand this expression, you will get this expression. There you have it. That is how you factor a perfect square trinomial. The important the importance of spotting this isn't going to be a game changer. So if you choose to ignore all the right signs, it's not going to create a dent in your knowledge bank. But it doesn't hurt to know. In other words, if you were to have factored this using a standard method of trial and error, you would have gotten the exact same answer. Let's do one more example. And in this case, we have 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. And let's find out if the a and c term are square rootable. The square root of 4x squared is 2x. That passes the first test. The square root of 9 is 3. Now, we need to find out whether 4 times 9, which is 36, and its square root, which is 6, we have to find out whether this is half of 12, and yes, it is. So, that passes all three tests. Now, all we have to do is assemble the terms that we found, 2x, 3 squared. Now, I'm going to give you a second to guess what should be there. Plus or minus? If you guess plus, you're correct because this sign determines the sign here. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any other questions related to this topic or any math, science, business, history question that you have, uh, go on over to biology-forums.com. It is a website dedicated to students, uh, which offers free homework help. See you soon.